Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today we'll be counting down the top 20 best superhero and comic book movies of all time. It is true that we've had an oversaturation of superhero movies in the past decade or so, but it's also true that we've had an oversaturation of a different kind of genre for every decade. We went through the westerns, we went through sci-fi, we went through cop and buddy cop movies, but despite the overuse of this specific genre, that doesn't mean we can't have some good movies come out of it. Before I start the list, however, I also wanted to point out that this isn't just comic book characters. There are some original characters in here too. But it's also not just superhero characters because I didn't want to leave out the vigilantes and anti-heroes either. So this list is kind of a mixed bag. I hope it makes sense. But that's enough for me. Let's get to the list. Number 20, The Mask. Right off the bat, we have a movie that you might not think of a comic book movie or a superhero movie, but it's actually kind of both. The Mask was originally published in Dark Horse Comics, which was later bought by DC. The main character wasn't really a hero, he wasn't even an anti-hero, he was pretty much just a villain. He was practically the Joker in his absurd way of killing people in violent ways. But then we got the 1994 movie and that completely recreated the character. The casting of Jim Carrey in the lead role took the character from being a dark and evil character and changed him into an awkward and relatable unlikely hero. The way that he was portrayed in the movie completely redefined how he's portrayed in the comics from then on. The way that he was shown in the movie is now how he's shown in the comics, a complete U-turn. The movie's got great comedy, great acting, and the special effects actually hold up after 20 years. It's a truly unique and original story that stands the test of time great. Number 19. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is gonna make or break a lot of people, but I thought that the sequel was actually better than the first one, and here's why. The first one introduced a lot of great characters and had a unique style about it that was a lot of fun. But when you get down to it, the plot is kind of cookie cutter. There's nothing in it that really happens that's that outside the box or that original in any way. It still managed to be a lot of fun, however, because the characters were just that great. But then the sequel came out, and it actually had a unique plot. The movie starts out as pretty basic and typical, but then around the halfway point, we've got a complete shift in tone. When I first saw this, this actually annoyed me, and I couldn't get over it for a little bit. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized it was actually just unique. It might not be your favorite storyline that Marvel's ever done, but at least it was original and unique, which nowadays in these superhero movies is hard to come by. Number 18. X-Men Days of Future Past. I think we can all agree that X-Men 3 The Last Stand is something we all want to forget about. It ruined one of the best X-Men story arcs in the entire series, and it ruined every new character it introduced into that movie. I'm the Juggerno, bitch! As well as ruining some of the characters it already had. And it introduced about a million plot holes and plot inconsistencies. And then we got a reboot series with X-Men First Class. And the great thing about reboots is that you don't have to think about the previous franchise again. But sometimes you prefer certain things from the other franchise and now that there's a reboot you miss out on all of that. But then we've got X-Men Days of Future Past. And that did everything perfect. They didn't say that the other movies didn't happen, they just created a new timeline. So some of the events from the original trilogy could still actually have happened, but all the things that we hated no longer were canon. By changing the timeline, they fixed all of the plot holes and inconsistencies from the previous movies. And we still got to keep all the great moments from the previous movies that we liked. Not only did it fix the franchise, it was actually just a good movie too. It had great acting, great directing, and it was well written. I don't know what else to say about it, it was just a really fun movie. And. It was a smart movie too. Number 17, Deadpool. Now you might be thinking that Deadpool deserves to be higher up on this list, but yet again we've got another superhero movie that falls victim to the cookie cutter plot syndrome. The main villain is who created the main hero, and the main villain wants to kill the main hero, and the main hero wants to kill the main villain. The main villain takes the girl and holds her hostage so that the main hero has to go to him. And that's it. That's the entire plot. It's pretty boring, honestly. So if it's that boring, why is it on the list at all? To narrow it down, I've got two main reasons for you. Number one. Deadpool is awesome. Number two, Deadpool is awesome. Ryan Reynolds plays Deadpool with such sincerity. It honestly makes you believe that he is Deadpool. Dad? So unless we ever get a better Deadpool movie, this one's gonna be right here on my list. Number 16, Avengers Infinity War. Another movie a lot of people are probably expecting to be much higher on this list, but I put it right here because I think that's fair. For the most part, the acting in this movie is fantastic. I haven't watched every Marvel movie and I still fell for most of these characters. I actually saw this movie before I saw Black Panther, and I still cared when T'Challa was there. Mm. <laughs> this is a spoiler free zone. <laughs> I totally gave that away. <laughs> the chemistry that the characters have developed as the franchise has been built up is fantastic, and it really showcases itself in this movie. As every single character has an emotional driven moment, you feel for them. In fact, the character I may have cared about the most was Thanos. Half the time, I was like, I'm 
kind of on Thanos' side, to be honest. They truly portrayed his side of the argument, and you understood why he was doing what he was doing. And it's true that some of the characters were underused, and some of the characters just disappeared. But what they did with what they had was pretty good. Number 15, X-Men 2. The best thing about the original X-Men movie was it understood its source material's roots in politics. It understood the gravity of the situation that the X-Men were dealing with. It wasn't just bad guys versus good guys, there was good guys versus good guys in there too. And the bad guys weren't entirely bad either. And then the second one came out and improved on the first one in every way. The budget got bigger so the special effects got better and the entire storyline was just bigger and better than the first one in every way. The character chemistry and development in the X-Men franchise is some of the best in all superhero movies. And Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart were some of the best casting choices ever, let alone in superhero movies. If you loved the X-Men but weren't sold on the first movie, this one was sure to pull you in. Number 14, Spider-Man 2. Many of the things that I just said about X-Men 2 can be applied to Spider-Man 2 as well. It's got great casting, got great acting, got great writing in it. This movie was innovative and bold in the way that it approached superheroes. This is the first time in film that a superhero genuinely walked away from being a superhero. We didn't just get one scene of Peter Parker going, oh, it's hard to be a superhero. Peter Parker gave up being Spider-Man for a full 30 minutes. This movie does really show you how hard it is to have multiple lives when you're trying to help the people that you care about, but you're also just trying to help the public. Trying to be able to keep a job, trying to be able to keep a girlfriend, trying to be able to be Spider-Man, it's all so much. We've got another great villain, we've got great character chemistry, and man, the casting is amazing. <laughs> Are you serious? Number 13, Batman. It's not often thought about, but the 1989 Batman movie really actually made Batman cool. Sure, he was cool in the comics, but that was long gone. For decades now, all people had in their mind when you said Batman the Joker was this. <laughs> They reinvented Batman as somebody who could actually be cool and dark and mysterious and not just invincible and lucky. And especially when you compare it to the Superman movies that had just been coming out, this was a completely new thing. This might not be the most iconic version of Batman anymore, but they certainly reinvented the wheel. We wouldn't have the animated series, we wouldn't have the Dark Knight trilogy, we wouldn't have anything that we have now if not for these movies. Number 12, Kick-Ass. Where to begin with Kick-Ass? It's just adrenaline. It's just an adrenaline rush. It's dark and gritty, but it's also hilarious at the same time. It creates a world where Nicolas Cage's crazy antics seem completely normal. There technically aren't any superheroes in this movie, but I think it's got a pretty accurate portrayal of what would happen if people wanted to be superheroes. A lot of people would get their ass kicked. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. It's got over-the-top stylized violence, it's got great characters, great dialogue, it's just a lot of fun to watch. And despite how absurd and crazy it does get, it's still rooted in a reality like it could almost happen. All that keeps it very relatable and very human. You could almost put yourself in that situation and think, that could be me. It's a ridiculous over-the-top fun movie, but it's also at the same time honestly very down-to-earth. Number 11, Hulk. Hear me out. <laughs> if you want a full explanation on this, I've got an unpopular opinion, so you can go ahead and watch that. But here's a condensed version of my reasoning. This movie gets attacked constantly for having outdated CGI, for having bad action sequences, for being boring, and I don't agree with any of that. First up, yes, the CGI is outdated. This movie is old. But the CGI isn't worse than anything else that was coming out at the time. The only reason I think people nitpick the CGI in that movie versus the new Hulk movies is because they want to enjoy the new Hulk movies. When people enjoy the plot, they don't notice the CGI as much. That's just a fact. And this movie has a good plot to it, and the new ones don't. But people enjoy it because that's what people go to a Hulk movie for, him smashing things. I personally hate how they're using the Hulk in the current movies. All he does is get angry and smash things, and then the new one, he doesn't get angry and doesn't smash things. That's character development. But in this movie, we get genuine, real, interesting ideas and looks into his emotions. Which brings me to why there aren't that many action sequences and why it's boring. Because this movie is an in-depth study on emotional trauma. In this version, the Hulk doesn't turn into the Hulk every time he gets mad. He turns into the Hulk every time he experiences pain. And it's scientifically accurate that your brain registers emotional pain in the same category as it registers physical pain. So throughout this movie, he becomes more and more aware of these repressed memories that he has. Repressed memories of abuse from his father and his mother dying. So each time these new emotional memories surface, he goes through all this pain and turmoil. This is much more in-depth, much more character driven, much more emotionally driven than any of the I'm mad, I'm gonna smash things. <laughs> this movie does not get any of the credit that it deserves. Number 10, 
The Incredibles. Who knew that the best political commentary that we get from a superhero movie would come from Pixar? It's really kind of funny to think about that this movie is supposed to be a parody of superhero movies, but is actually one of the best superhero movies out there. It has intelligent commentary, it has great characters and emotionally driven moments, it's hilarious, and actually has good action sequences too. It's so good that I drove fans insane at the mere mention of his sequel 14 years later. I remember seeing this when it came out. I absolutely loved it, and I love it just as much now. It's just as much for kids as it is for adults in a way that only Pixar can handle. It's got great acting, it's got great characters, it's got a great plot, it's just fun in every way. Number 9. Batman Begins. Tim Burton's Batman was great, but it was still very much a comic book movie. Christopher Nolan's movie, however, was just a great movie that happened to be about Batman. It was so good, in fact, that it inspired an entire genre of dark and gritty superheroes. None of them were really that good, but it wasn't Batman's fault. It actually speaks to Nolan's greatness that everybody keeps trying this even though it isn't working. The studio is willing to pass on making mediocre movies and risk making bomb after bomb in hopes that one of them will catch the magic of the Batman movies and be great. That means that they must have been doing something really right, or at the very least they caught lightning in a bottle. Number 8. Iron Man. This is what happens when the MCU takes itself seriously. I'm not a fan of the MCU, but this movie is genuinely great. It's very similar to Batman Begins in the way that it spawned an entire genre of superhero movies. We wouldn't have any of these other MCU movies if Iron Man hadn't succeeded in the way that it did. Looking back, it can feel pretty predictable and feel like it's cookie cutter. Well, it's because it is the cookie cutter. So if it feels like it's getting boring with all the MCU movies being exactly the same, it's because they're all trying to be Iron Man. And like I said about Batman Begins, that must mean that they were doing something very right. Number 7. Batman Mask of Phantasm I didn't put many animated movies on this list, and the reason is most of them feel childish or unnecessary in some way. However, that is not the case for this movie at all. Mask of Phantasm was directly spawned out of Batman the Animated Series and has the same writers, same artists, and same actors. It's the closest thing that we have to Batman the Animated Series, the movie. Batman the Animated Series introduced the most iconic versions of Batman and the Joker of all time. And this is no exception to their greatness. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are at their best in this movie. The plot is also completely original and unlike anything we've ever seen before. In a lot of people's opinions, this is actually the best Batman movie of all time. For an animated movie to have a legitimate claim at that title is a pretty big deal. But surprisingly, it's also actually not that well known. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and watch it. You won't be disappointed. Number 6. Spider-Man I think in the debate which is better the first one or the second one, it comes primarily down to personal preference. As I mentioned, the second one does have great characters and chemistry, but the first one is the one that introduced those characters and actors. The first one doesn't have the same CGI quality as the second one does, but the action sequences were still a lot of fun to watch, and a big part of that is because they did use practical effects. Even when it seemed like it was unnecessary and they could have just done it in an easier way, they came up with practical ways to do things. Like this. This actually happened. Why? I don't know. <laughs> But it's awesome. <laughs> What's make or break though is the fact that this is an origin story. A lot of people hate origin stories and they get bored by them. After the first time seeing it, they only want to see the sequels. The origin story, however, in this movie is so much fun that it's kind of the opposite. Sometimes I would actually prefer watching him discover his powers in, in a wrestling match than in some big action-packed sequence. Even if you don't usually like origin stories, this is one of the best ones out there. And on top of all that, it's got one of the most iconic lines in superhero movie history. Remember great power comes great responsibility. Unlike the Spider-Man movies to follow, this one has an in-depth look at the characters and the way that they interact and why they do what they do. For more on that, I've got a video on that too, so go ahead and check that out. Number 5. Watchmen. It's divided fans because it does stray from the source material near the end of the movie. But in some people's opinions, including mine, the ending in the movie was how it had to be. I liked your ending better than what happens in the book. It seems to tie everything together a bit more uh, completely because it, the, the, the thread of it runs through the entire movie. The cool thing about the squid in the graphic novel, for me, was when I turned that page, when I was reading the graphic novel for the first time, and you turn that page and you come to the squid, mm. you, your brain does go like, what the? <laughs> and the cool thing about the graphic novel is you can flip back, which you have to do. Mm. And there, that's a cool discovery. The movie has like, there were the graphic novel then suddenly has like, another, there's another thing in it that you didn't really understand until you, you kind of have to go back and do it. You can't really do that in a movie. And aside from that moment, it's a pretty faithful adaption. I'm a big fan of Zack Snyder, and this might be him at his best. Number four, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. 
This is another unpopular opinion apparently according to the reaction to my top sequels list, but I do genuinely think this is a great movie. It's an improvement on the first one in every way. The special effects are better, the acting's better, the writing's better, the villain's better, everything is more interesting than the first one. And it's just such a unique and different kind of story. What other comic book movies are like this? This doesn't even really feel like a comic book movie, it's just a great different fantasy movie and it happens to be about a comic book character who happens to be an anti-hero. I wouldn't mind the superhero movie craze so much if we got more movies like this stuck in there once in a while, but we never seem to get anything else like this. This is its own thing. It's creepy, it's stylistic, it's unique, it's different, it's strange and awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, you definitely should. I recommend it to everybody I know. Number three, V for Vendetta. I don't want to pretend that this is a completely unique idea, but at the same time, it's such a different take on it and such a different scenario and different look to it and everything that it's kind of just unique. The driving concept of this movie is that being a hero is about the idea, not about the physical person. It doesn't matter so much about the person, it's the idea, because the idea can't die. Overthrowing power or entire government can't be done by one man but it can be done by one idea. And on top of that, it's a very unique style of film. It doesn't feel like a comic book movie. It doesn't feel like an action movie. It feels different. It's also got great acting. Hugo Weaving is able to do so much with his character despite never seeing his face. Number two, Logan. I regret leaving Logan off of my top sequels list. Somebody pointed it out to me and I realized I hadn't even thought about it as a sequel, but it is. It feels so much like it's a standalone movie, but it actually encapsulates everything in that entire franchise all into one movie. People talk about the impact that Infinity War had when that ended, but I felt just as much if not more actually, at the ending of this. If you've been a fan of Hugh Jackman as the Wolverine and been watching him since 2000, you feel the impact of every scene. Every moment you're sitting on the edge of your seat, every moment you need to know what's gonna happen next. Even when you know the outcome, you need to know what's gonna happen next. And once again, it brings back Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart in their amazing roles that they've been reprising for over a decade and a half. You can see the heart and emotion in every single line, in every single look in their eye. As somebody who's been a fan of this franchise since it began, I felt everything. <sighs> it's an emotional roller coaster, man. In my opinion, this is the only movie that came out during the superhero craze that was able to set itself aside and be a genuinely amazing movie despite all of the other superhero movies. This was its own thing. This was its own great movie that genuinely stood a chance to be the movie of the year. It was fantastic. I can't put it any better than that. Number one, The Dark Knight. You all saw it coming, but really, what's the competition here? The Dark Knight was so good that it made everybody completely forget about Batman Begins, which I've already talked about was amazing. It already had Christian Bale, Michael Caine, and Morgan Freeman reprising their great roles, but then we introduced Heath Ledger as the Joker, which is debatably the greatest villain in movie history. I'm not talking superhero movies, I'm talking movies in general. Darth Vader, Hal, Hannibal Lecter, Heath Ledger's Joker is up there with them all. And on top of all that, he's reprising a role. He's doing this role with Mark Hamill's Joker imprinted in everybody's mind. Everybody went into this movie comparing him to Mark Hamill or Jack Nicholson. Regardless of whichever Joker is your favorite, you left this theater impressed. Everybody in this movie was great. The directing was flawless, the writing was great, the acting was all brilliant. Once again, this wasn't just a superhero movie. This was a great, one of the best of all time movies that just happened to be about Batman. And that is why The Dark Knight is the greatest superhero slash comic book movie of all time. So that's my list. What do you guys think? Comment below your list of your favorite superhero movies and we'll keep the conversation going. Of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Thanks, guys.